Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to Coffee Talk. You are joining me live on the Better Body Fitness fan page. You might even be joining me on demand. Make sure if you stop by to listen, you drop a comment. Let me know you've been here. I would love to interact with you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, my friends. Happy hop day. <laughs> you know what that means. It's easy peasy here on out for the rest of the week. Easy peasy. Dee Dee, good morning, my friend. Happy hump day. <laughs> I try not to yell too loud when I'm this close to the camera. I'm not quite sure what it is, what it's like on your end. Beth, good morning. I have to tell you all, I am envious of Beth's sweat. I am. I know she thinks it's gross, but I love just how it just coats her. <laughs> yes, it does sound a little disgusting, but as I told her, it just makes me cherish warm weather even more. <laughs> Sue, good morning. Happy hump day. Ashley, good morning. Charmaine, good morning. Charlene, good morning. Sarah Flippin' Robertson. <laughs> Good morning, Ashley. Good morning. Uh, and glist glistens. I thought, I am at, you know, you typed a couple things today and my eyes are seeing something else. I thought you said and glisters. I thought you meant glistening blisters, <laughs> but it's just glistens. It's just glistens. Carrie, good morning. Nikki, good morning. Marsha, good morning. Happy hope day. Karen, good morning. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, We've got a spicy conversation today. I have three pages, I'm not exaggerating, <laughs> three pages of notes. Uh, there's another page here. Chuck and I went on a walk yesterday and there's been something on our minds for quite some time and we talk about it and I'm always like, that would make the perfect coffee talk. But then by the time I get home, it's woo. <laughs> so yesterday I sat down and I started making my notes and it just poured out of me. So I hope you enjoy the conversation today. Now I'm going to ask something of you. Amy, good morning. Karen, good morning. Ashley, good morning. If you have the ability to type today, if you have the ability to interact with me today, I would really love that. I would appreciate it. If you don't feel like you do or you don't want to share, I understand that as well. I want this to be a safe zone. Even though it's live for the world to see, I want this to be a safe zone for you. So share what you want. Don't share what you don't want, my friends. Lori, good morning. Can you say all of our names like Sarah Flippin Robertson? Lori, okay, how do you say, is it uh, Getz? Is it Getz? Lori Getz Campbell. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I can. Amy, good morning. Jody, good morning. Jenny, good morning. Sarah, good morning. All right, let's get this show on the road. Susan, good morning. And the cycle continues. That's the title of today's video. I believe you'll understand why as we get deeper into it. Uh, Michelle, good morning. Tammy, good morning. So here's where I want to start the interaction, my friends. Are you the same person you were 10 years ago? Are you the same person you were 20 years ago or 30 years ago if you've had enough life under your belt? Are you the same person? What I mean by that is what's happened in those years, marriage, children, divorce, death, weight gain, weight loss, trauma. Are you the same person that you were 10, 20, or 30 years ago? Stacy, good morning. Michelle, good morning. Amy, nope. Not even last year. Susan, not at all. Trauma. I want to talk a little bit about trauma, my friends. And I know that this is always a very emotional subject. And maybe you have gotten through life unscathed. Maybe you haven't dealt with any trauma. But my guess is that most of us on some level have dealt with some sort of trauma. Even if it was an eating addiction that has traumatized us, what caused the addiction? Where's the trauma coming from? Sandy, nope. Charlene, nope. Heather, good morning. Ruth, good morning. Dee Dee, nope. Beth, yes and no. Ashley, not at all. I wanna know, are you healing from your trauma? Are you healed? Are you still in healing? When you see yourself struggling to set goals, 
to look in the mirror and love what you see, struggling to not let the scale define your journey, your trauma is still very real. When you can't set goals for yourself, when you can't go to the mirror and love what you see in the mirror, regardless of where you're at in your journey, when you are still letting the scale define your journey, I'm going to guess that you still have some trauma that you haven't dealt with. And I believe sometimes we think we've healed. We think we've, we think we've, we've gotten over the trauma and we've healed. We don't realize that these little things keep us connected to that trauma. They keep us back in the past with who we were. Even though we've taken such big steps to come forward. How long have you been tuning into Coffee Talk? So this is episode 340. Christina, good morning. Happy hump day. Beth, starting to heal. Lisa, good morning. Uh, you know, Beth, and I would believe that people probably look at you and think, Beth, Beth, is, Beth is healed. Beth has had trauma, right? Right? We are all healing from something. I want to know, how long have you been tuning into Coffee Talks? Some of you have been here for just a week. Some of you have been here for a month. Some of you have been here for all 340 episodes. What has been your biggest takeaway? I would love to know. Not maybe up here. I want to know what's been your biggest takeaway in regards to action. And you know, this can be just a quick one. What has been your biggest takeaway in regards to action? Nick, Nikki's been here since day one. That's right, Lori. In the process of healing, but still dealing with triggers. Lisa, 340 episodes. Love it. Carrie, since November. What has been your biggest takeaway? If a couple of you could just drop a couple things in there, I'd love to know. When you've gotten onto Coffee Talks, what's been one takeaway that you put into action? You guys hear a lot of things, and I see you say a lot so many times, oh, this really hits home. Yes, this is me. This is what I need to work on. Um, Ashley, positivity. I love it. Carrie, sets the tone for my day. Ruth, since January, that I matter has that I matter has been my biggest takeaway. I love that. So here's if you try, if there's anything you take away from any episode of 340 episodes and you put it into action, this is what I want it to be today. Here's what I want you to take away today, the one thing, and it would be to get rid of your scale. That's what I'm asking you. That's what I'm asking of you today. Maybe, you know, I know some of you use it for the challenges for day one, day 21. I want you to go and get that scale today and I want you to get rid of it. I want you to smash it I want you to throw it in the garbage. If there is one thing that you take away from 340 episodes, that's what I want you to take away. Stop comparing yourself to the you 10 years ago. Stop comparing yourself to the you 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Stop comparing yourself to who you were before you had children. Stop comparing yourself to who you were in college or high school when you were a three sport athlete. Stop comparing yourself to who you were before you started uh, pre-menopause or menopause. Stop comparing yourself to who you were before trauma hit. I need you to stop comparing yourself to that person you were. Go ahead, coach. And I would say if you have a struggle in doing this, if, if you are pulling your scale out and you're like, I can't do it, I can't let go, I can't smash it. I can't take the battery out. I, not I can't. I won't. I won't. I choose not to. Well, the initial conversation in your head probably is I can't, right? And then do you remember the coffee talk yesterday? If you missed yesterday's coffee talk, go back and watch it because it leads directly to yesterday's coffee talk of why. If you are unwilling to do this, what would your life like be without the scale? Have you ever done it? And most of the people that are a part of our culture that have let go of the scale have seen tremendous astronomical results because they were not allowing themselves to be defined by a number and all of the trauma of, of truly being defined by a number and putting self-worth in that. They can stare at a scale all day long and define their self-worth, but they are unwilling to look in the mirror 
They're unwilling to look in the mirror to proclaim self-love, right? And to proclaim, you know, to proclaim a step in the healing process. So that's just, I wanted to jump in here real quickly. Challenge yourself, my friends. And if you're not somebody that lives and dies by the scale, what is the thing that is holding control over your life that is unallowing, un unallowing you to move forward? Did you read my notes? No, did I you didn't read know. my notes? I can't read that. Uh, this act, and if you saw, this actually chokes me up. I, I, this chokes me up. Sarah said, agree, it gets in my head. Even when I'm successful, the scale messes with me. It, it, it's such a crazy cycle, hence, and the cycle continues. Uh, Ash, Ash, what was that, coach? That's abuse. It's abuse. Ashley, we moved last month. The scale didn't make it to the new house. Carrie, it's kind of crazy. That's the first question people ask. How much weight have you lost? I respond with 33 inches. Yes, 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 yes. Sarah, I can do more than I ever thought possible. I love that. Why are you continually punishing yourself? Maybe not all of you, but what do you punish yourself with? Why are you continually punishing yourself with that scale? Why do you let the scale continue to be your abuser? We, this was a conversation we had weeks ago, maybe even a couple months. Why do you allow the scale to be your abuser? Now, what do I mean by that? Does your scale tell you you're not pretty enough? Does your scale tell you you're always going to be this weight and nothing you do matters? Does the scale tell you to starve yourself? Does the scale tell you that you've earned a treat? Does the scale tell you that you're fat? that you're unworthy, that you're unloved, that you're unsuccessful? Does it tell you that you're skinny, that you're worthy, that you're loved, that you are successful? Do you give the scale this much power? And I'm being serious and I want you to seriously think about this. What does your scale, and it's right here. You can say it's, what does it tell you about yourself? You've come this far. You've come this far, right? All of the things you've taken away from coffee talks and the new nuggets, why can you not break this one chain of bondage? At what point in life did you believe the scale was a measure of your success or failure? And why can't you let that go now? You were addicted to alcohol once, and now you're not. You were addicted to sugar once, and now you're not. Maybe you were addicted to porn. Maybe you were addicted to gambling and now you're not. Why are you still addicted to the scale? Why can you not break that chain? It's a serious question. This is something that keeps us in a vicious, vicious cycle. Uh, Sarah, it kind of scares me to not know what I weigh. I'm good with not weighing when I'm not trying, but when I'm trying to lose, I want to know. Why are you trying to lose? Why aren't we just trying to be healthy? I think that's something that's just been ingrained in our minds forever. If you do the right things, the right things will happen. If you eat the right foods, the right foods will happen. If you work out, you're going to gain muscle. The scale is going to go up. Are you doing the wrong thing? No. I implore you to get rid of that scale. I know it's hard. I know you want to base what you're doing in every day on if that scale tells you you're doing the right things. But I'm gonna get to that even more. How long are you gonna drink that poison? How long are you going to drink that poison? Until it kills you? Until you quit and you wait and you gain more weight and in a year from now, you do it all over again? How long are you going to drink that poison? I can't out coach. What you think is the end all be all of success. I can't out coach the scale. I don't have the antidote for that poison. I don't have it. I wish I did. I have the antidote for a lot of things. You ask me how many calories to eat. You ask me how you should track. You ask me how much water. You ask me, I, I, I have the antidote. I've got so much information for you. I don't have a way for you to trick that scale. I don't have a healthy way for you to beast mode your results. I don't have it. I've never had it. I don't want to pretend that I have it. And I don't want you to believe that something, somebody else has it either. What will you do when one day it tells you 
You have successfully hit your target. Sarah, maybe this one's for you. What will you do when it successfully tells you you've hit a target? When you've hit that random number that you've pulled out of the air, what will you do? Are you going to try and put on muscle because the scale's gonna go up? Then what? You can't ever get your period again. Once you've hit that number, you can't ever get your period again because the scale's gonna go up. You can't ever go on vacation again. You can't ever get an in, you can't ever get hurt. You can never have an injury, can't ever have a surgery. You can't ever have too much sodium. You won't be able to go through menopause because the scale is going to fluctuate. You're never going to be able to celebrate a holiday ever again. And you're never going to be able to work out too hard because your body retains water and the scale is going to go up. So what will you do? What will you do when you hit that magical number on the scale to know that you've successfully made it? You'll never be able to have an experience ever again that might affect the scale. When you get to your goal, are you just not gonna get on the scale anymore because you've achieved it until your clothes start to get a little bit tighter and then you're gonna get on the scale to see that maybe you've rebounded a little bit and that you have to get back on track with your healthy habits and the cycle continues. When we talk about how we've lived a yo-yo life, ladies, this is us. We do everything we can to get to a goal weight. We do all the unhealthy, even mixed in with healthy, right? We try to add in more exercise. We try to count. We try to pull our calories even lower. We will do anything we can to hit that number on the scale. Sometimes we'll weigh ourselves two or three times a day just to make sure the scale isn't going up. We won't eat. We won't drink water just to make sure the scale doesn't go up just so we can hit a number that we can't even maintain, that we can't even maintain. Uh, hold on, I've got some good comments here. Lori, I said a few weeks ago when I received a compliment, when they asked how much I've lost, I said, my scale can't measure my determination, so I, so I don't ask it. Um, Michelle, I never look at myself in the mirror. I just look to make sure my clothes match and I don't have tags hanging out and you can't see lines under my clothes. That brings a tear to my eye. I try not to use my scale. I haven't since I sent my last pictures, which is huge for me. Heidi, I used to have an obsession with stepping on that scale. Once I got rid of it, it allowed me freedom. I deemed my success how my clothes started fitting. Numbers on the scale do not matter. My, my, my success is in how I feel. Energy through the roof, freedom. Freedom! Susan, I need to throw my scale out the window. Do it today. Don't just say that and say it again when I have this conversation again. Here's a challenge. Take a picture of your scale in the trash and put it in the comments. Smash that sucker. I don't care if it costs it $100. Smash it. If, it does it, if it doesn't serve you, why would you keep it? Kirsten, my weight has been the same three numbers for the past five months, but my measurements in health have been getting better. The weight is not the end all be all. It is difficult to convince myself of that sometimes since it is always about the weight before, but I'm getting there. Did you have, you, you, I assume you're here too. Yeah, well, I mean, just side note, when we pick our challenge winners, it has nothing to do with weight loss. Ever, ever, ever. Um, no, what came to my mind was, well, well, number one, half the reason we are here today having this conversation is we're definitely drawing a line in the sand. We had a really long talk yesterday about the future of how we want to lead our community. And really it boils down to the fact that we are just, we are just so wrapped up in the things that don't serve us. Like we want to break and shatter the frame and the paradigms that we have been taught and trained and educated to believe define our results. We are here to smash that frame. We're not just gonna sit here and settle and just say, we're gonna do, we're gonna do weight loss challenges because we're really good at helping people lose weight. That doesn't do anybody any service and any good. We are drawing that line in the sand and that's why you're gonna hear this message more times, more often, framing it up in different ways to allow your mind to truly step into a new possibility. And I think that rep that I, I thought about was we have a lot of women in our, in our a lot of moms, a lot of ladies, um, and they're bringing their husbands along and we're slowly spreading this message to the men in our community because I think it's important that this is, we're not, we don't just help women and we don't just help people lose weight. We help men and women, husbands, 
you know, wives, moms, and dads, because we have to be examples. To lead a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And, and But I hear a lot of ladies out there just say, this is what I hear. It's so easy for my husband to what? To lose weight. To lose weight. It's so easy for him. And I will, I'm here to tell you, as a guy and as having plus to 20 years of experience, well, actually, my transformation began 21 years ago, right? Yes, I carry more muscle than her. There, there is a, I have a massive advantage over her based off the fact of her, the fact that she is designed to carry children. She's had three children. She has a thyroid condition. Her hormones are different than mine. Everything about her as a human being is different. And weight loss is a little bit more challenging. But if we break and shatter that frame, just because a guy can lose weight faster than a woman or because your husband can lose weight faster than you, Here's the thing we bring it back to. That does not mean that just because I can lose weight or fat faster than her, it doesn't mean that I'm healthy. All it means is that I can take another opportunity to stop eating crap and move my body and lift some weight and ignite some muscle mass and I can lose weight. And I will tell you over the years of experience, we actually one time, one time in our history, we ran a dad's challenge, and this was like three years ago, and we had a prize for it, and it was, it was based off of weight and percentage. I saw guys do insane stuff, lose like 25 pounds in a month, and where were they 90 days after that? Right back to where they started, right? They didn't learn anything. They weren't, I shouldn't say they didn't learn anything, but they weren't applying it. They didn't have stewardship. We want to teach you, teach your husbands, teach your significant others about having stewardship over the the things that are gonna serve you long-term. We need to find other ways to quantify, and that's the issue. I think a lot of us, that I know I'm I'm raising my voice here, but I'm super passionate. We believe that we in order to quantify a result, it has to be based around that number. And it's just not true. I have, we have so many people that will say, I just went in for my HRA, and this, 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 and this, we're off the charts. And then two days later, they're like, oh, but the scale. No. And it's crazy. You women, you are working so hard. You're making the meals. You're doing your four S's. You're getting your workouts in. And yet you still believe that the scale should tell you that you are successful. You don't want to believe it unless the scale tells you that. We have to break, we have to break that cha- those chains of bondage today. We cannot go one more day believing that that thing is going to tell us whether or not we are successful or not successful or worthy or unworthy or loved or not loved, healthy or not healthy. It cannot tell you those things. It is a calculator and it cannot predict your success. Get rid of it today. I beg you to get rid of it today. Do not let it steal another moment of joy from you. Lori, I'm not sure how many episodes I've watched, but but it's many, and these chats have done more for me than countless hours in the gym or any meal plan. Loving ourselves is priceless. And the more you love yourself, the more you're going to want to, the more you're going to love getting to the gym. The more you're going to love making and eating that healthy meal. Those things don't make the self-love happen. The self-love makes those things enjoyable. Is that it? I think that's it. I just felt the need to sit in here. And you know what? We're challenging you to throw your scale out. Honestly. Yes, it's, you know, in our challenge, it asks for start weight, end weight. Great. Maybe we'll even take that off. I was just going to say. Don't worry about it. I, I am inspired enough today that we're having this open, honest conversation that uh, this is going to be the last challenge in the history of BBF that we're going to ask for a start and end weight. I love it. I love it. Change requires change. Change requires change. Get rid of that scale. My ending, my ending comment here today is, and the cycle continues because it will, if you don't change something today. All right, my friends, that's where we're going to end it. Join coach Chuck at noon for the noon nugget. I'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 AM. Lord knows what we're going to talk about, but I love you all. I want the absolute best for you, but I can't want it more than you. All right, my friends, go out and have it. No, and I'm serious. (laughs) We are going to go back on this feed and we are going to be waiting to see your pictures. Break the cycle. Yep. Break the chain. Yep. Sarah, wow, Chris, this is a great message. While I'm on vacation, I can't keep track of days and then you two on my screen on a Wednesday really confused me. (laughs) All right, my friends, we love you all. 
We love you all. Go out. Have a fantastic day. You are in control of you.